Hello, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thanks for joining us for our October Climate Watch update brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz. Let's take a look at what is going on at the moment because we are still in a kind of typical spring and there's all this chatter about La Nina. It's been going on now all year. Uh, so we're going to take another look at that and see just what is going on well to the north of us. But really, to be honest with you, our weather pattern still looks highly dominated by weather systems coming out of Australia and out of the Southern Ocean area and coming through towards us. But right now, the setup is kind of interesting. As we kick off the start of the month, one day late, apologies, but we were waiting for the Bureau of Meteorology to update, and that didn't happen until last night. So that was uh, on the evening of October the 1st. So we had to wait a little bit longer to, to uh, make the video for you. High pressure is out to the east here. Now that's encouraging a milder airflow. There's some low pressure in the middle, and then the next high. The colour shading you see on here shows much of Australia quite warm at the moment, except for the colder southerly change down here in the southern part of Western Australia. But for the New Zealand area, it's a mixture of two things. You've got a bit of subtropical air coming in, and a southerly too. And that kind of highlights the spring that New Zealand is in. It is a chaotic, messy one this year, and it feels, to me anyway, a lot more traditional. So let's take a look at what the Bureau of Meteorology is saying about La Nina. The media have been talking about this, government forecasters have been talking about this in New Zealand all year long. And we're now in the 10th month, and guess what? It's still not here. So I'm not quite sure why they're so obsessed with it because it's not dominating our weather and it really has very little to do with what is going on in our part of the world at the moment. But we do need to focus on it because it is obviously being talked about. So this month I've done something differently. I wanted to show you what we said last month or at least what the Bureau of Meteorology said last month. These maps or these graphs show the model of all models. So you take all of those global computer models from each different country, and then they try and put them into one graph to take a clean look at. And what you see last month was, just to make it clear for you, the top part here is El Nino, the middle part is neutral, that's what we're in at the moment, and then the lower part means that you're into La Nina conditions. So when we updated you a month ago at the start of September, the general thinking was that this was definitely going into La Nina, or at least very close to it, borderline and then gradually coming back out again as we go into the start of next year. Look at the new update, four weeks later, the one that we just waited for last night, and all of those tracking uh, lines have gone up a notch. In other words, keeping it further into the neutral area, and even more so going back into El Nino for next year, although it is still in the neutral zone. So that's kind of interesting, considering there's a lot of stories about La Nina forming. So why is that? Well, each government does it differently. And in America, NOAA, uh, they are basically like the NIWA of New Zealand. Uh, they are the ones that are really kind of pushing, or not pushing, but their, their data seems strongest towards that La Nina narrative. And that's one of the reasons why you're hearing so much chatter about it. But to be honest with you, if we're still in a La Nina watch, we've got another two categories to go before we are officially into it. And here's another thing. Even if we do get down somewhere, in the next couple of months into it, how long does it last? The Bureau of Meteorology says how long it sustains at that is also a critical part before you announce it, because you don't announce La Nina to last a week or two. It lasts a few months. And so I don't know if we're even gonna see it announced this year. If it does, it's going to be in our spring, because by the time we're in summer, model of all models here from the Bureau of Meteorology says we are very much so in neutral. These uh, graphs, show the Indian Ocean dipole. That is like the Indian Ocean's version of La Nina and El Nino. And it's also remarkably the same, pretty much into that neutral zone. So that means the chaotic neutral weather pattern we've got is still around with us. And that does make sense. Some people find it confusing to say, how is neutral chaotic? Neutral is just think of it as a car and you're training your kids to drive and they're sort of between first and reverse <laughs> trying to work it out. That's basically what a neutral season is. It means our weather patterns are messy. We can get a warm northerly one day, a wintry southerly the next, and it's just all over the place. So for now, let's kick off with the air pressure systems as we go into the month of October. And as we see at the moment, low pressure forming in the New Zealand area. And there's a bit of a pattern at the moment where it goes high, low, high, low, high, and low pressure here. We don't have a blue box, apologies, but that's another low. So it's, a, it's quite an even pattern at the moment. And that's the reason why we're getting real spring variety in our temperatures. Some days are warmer, some days are colder, and that's because some days we've got the colder southerly coming up as a high comes in, or we've got the milder northerly as the highs depart. 
As we go into the second week, still a big area of low pressure coming into the New Zealand zone and more stormy stuff down over the Southern Ocean, as we've been seeing for many, many months now down there. But what is critical for many people who are, are asking about whether La Nina is going to affect us, these red boxes up here, that's higher pressure coming along to the north. While they are in place here, we are not going to notice what is happening in the tropics because these are kind of like an invisible brick wall in the sky and it stops low pressure zones up here, which is where they are forming in a La Nina summer. But actually, even in uh, this time of the year, we're going into the wet season. So it's normal to be seeing low pressure forming up here anyway. But with La Nina, it should be warmer than usual on a sea surface level. But until these highs break off, we're not seeing a lot of life coming down out of the tropics. But maybe we might do in the middle of the month. This is the third week or the start of the third week. So uh, for those of you who say, why don't we do a fourth week? Computer modeling is not very good to lock in anything that far out when you're talking about a weather forecast. Climate's a little different. You sort of blur the lines a wee bit more. But what you're seeing here is low pressure forming uh, around Australia and dropping southwards. You're seeing low pressure, not so much the part over New Zealand, but this one here uh, near Tonga and uh, south of Samoa. This is the one that is dropping southwards. And again, another one out here, more towards French Polynesia. So those are a bit more of a, a hallmark of of La Nina, but it could also just be the signs of going into the wet season, which starts basically as we go into the next couple of months. So we're starting to see that shift around, but look, these are still very powerful high pressure zones that are showing up in the map. So that means we've still got plenty of spring variety. We're not yet seeing any kind of weather pattern dominated from north of us. And by the way, lastly, the lows down here are still very powerful, uh, you know, causing a fair bit of stormy weather. But the air pressure is starting to lift up a wee bit after them being down in the 920s, 30s, 40s, as far as air pressure is concerned. That changes and they're starting to lift up a wee bit more. And that just reduces the amount of windy westerlies that are blowing up in the New Zealand area, at least sort of generically speaking. So let's get into rainfall now, kicking off with the next seven days departure from normal. This just means how much wetter or drier is it compared to usual for the start of October. What you're noticing in the New Zealand area, the blues, the whites, that's a lot of uh, sign of rain and normal rain for this time of the year. Although if you're in the West Coast and Southland and Otago, those areas are definitely wetter than usual at the moment. And so you're probably not too happy about seeing a lot more coming in. North Canterbury and Hawke's Bay, some parts of Wider Upper, you could do with a bit more rain and you may not get as much as you want from the wet weather that's coming in over the next week or so. So let's take a look at the next 15 days rainfall and see what is happening around our part of the world. Up in the tropics here, you can see the line of rain de developing, the convergence zone. That's plenty of heavy rain, a few hundred millimetres forming in some of these darker blue areas. And that is normal because, as I say, we're going into the wet season. But with La Nina, if that is ever announced this year, and I'm still a bit sceptical it will, uh, these areas up here will be seeing more wet weather, more low pressure, that's usually what happens. But rem Australia's remarkably dry for the next 15 days, so there's not really any sign uh, of anything big changing around the Australian area. And in the New Zealand area, certainly got that rain mostly coming in from that low that we've got right now, forming in the first week. Here's a closer view of it. So most of the country is going to get a good drink of rain over the next week or two. Eastern areas, Maybe not as much. Here around you know, places like Hastings, you might not be seeing a huge amount, 10, 15 millimetres. Now, of course, that low pressure zone that's with us at the moment, it only takes a slight shift in the airflow, suddenly rain could drive in there. But for now, I think many, many parts of the country are going to get a good amount of rain. And with the extra warmth we've got, because it's warmer than average, and we're expecting that to be uh, going on through the month of October, warmer than usual, that's going to help with pasture growth and with plant life. You know, it's going to be seeing uh, plants growing quickly as a result of the warm and the rain. Marine heat waves. All right, so this is how we measure uh, La Nina. Normally with La Nina up here along the equator, this is the equator right here, obviously, uh, you would see blue all over the eastern side and reds to the west. It's not really jumping off the screen, is it? You can see that it's slightly blue. You can see why they're talking about La Nina. But when you come to our side of the western side, it doesn't really jump off the screen at you. It would do if it looked like that further to the north up there around the Aleutian Islands and Japan. So the uh, temperatures are not necessarily jumping off the map in an extraordinary way. Separate to the equator, 
just the temperatures in our part of the world, and this has nothing to do with El Nino or La Nina, you can see more of these sort of red blobs, white and red blobs. So that means we're either normal or slightly warmer than normal for the most part. Here's a closer view of that. Uh, this is from the Moana Project. Please check out their website. It's very good. If you're into marine information, they've got some really nice stuff in there. So you can see on this map as well, this is uh, normal in the white shading, and many, many parts of the map are kind of leaning into that warmer than average area. Not so much in the extremes, but just slightly above normal, a couple of degrees above normal. A few areas are blue, but that's mostly well offshore from land. This is a clearer way of looking at it, the coastal side of the, any potential marine heat waves. Uh, look, not looking too bad around the South Island, but certainly these areas around the North Island in the yellow, that's moderate and strong as in these orange areas. But this is severe around parts of Wider Upper at the moment. Obviously, it's fluid, moves around, uh, but that at the moment is showing some signs of our sea temperatures lifting up. And that just means when you've got a rainmaker in the area, there's a higher chance of that rainmaker producing more rain. And finally, the Niwa soil moisture deficit map showing uh, some parts of the North Island drying out now. The eastern side of Northland, Great Barrier Island, Northern Coromandel, Bay of Plenty, uh, sort of Gisborne to Ma here, southern and central parts of Hawke's Bay, also around Nelson and Richmond, and northern parts of Canterbury. Those areas are leaning drier, and not all of you will get the relief you need over the next week or so as a result of that uh, low that we've got on the first week. But you've got these southern areas, and they've got more rain on the way from when we recorded this. So I think we're going to be seeing that blue extend around uh, Otago and into Southland. Many other parts of the country should have good rainfall, hopefully not too much of a good thing. And like I said just before, our temperatures are expected to be warmer than average as we go through this month. That doesn't mean that we're done with the cold blasts, but because we are seeing those storms to the south of New Zealand looking like they might just sort of ease back a little bit in intensity, that does reduce the amount of energy to shoot up some big cold southerly. But we still maintain October, despite it being warmer than average, we are expecting it to uh, have this slightly elevated risk of a winter blast or a frost event because the Southern Ocean is still quite stormy from a weather point of view, obviously above it, not in it. Someone does write to me almost every month and says, um, the weather doesn't happen in the Southern Ocean, it happens over it. But when we say, when we say in the Southern Ocean, what we're, one word we're not saying at the end is area. In the Southern Ocean area, in the Tasman Sea area. Just so you know, for those of you who are already penning a letter to me. All right, that is all from me. Hope you have a fantastic October. I know it's spring. I've got hay fever today, you might have noticed. Um, and so, yeah, welcome to real spring. The days are getting longer. The nights are getting shorter. We're rolling towards summer. I'll see you again in one month from now with our next Climate Watch Update.